out of the Jews, but they used a patriarchal system. They looked at it as through the, like a, the genealogy from the fathers and the generations going back to, to uh, their ancestors and worship one God. But they also not only worship that God, they also worship other gods. And this is a huge, grievous error of idolatry. But the Jews worship Yahweh through the law of Moses. They worship the same God, but they worship him through the patri a different system, a patriarchal system of ancestors. And Jesus didn't fit the description that the Jews had for the Messiah. So Jesus Christ himself, God in the flesh, had been rejected by the very people he came to seek and save. And so this other woman comes and she approaches him and Jesus knows what he's going to do, but you watch her persistence in not allowing anything to deter her from seeking from the one she believed could help her. You see, why did she approach Jesus? Why didn't she go to anyone else? Something about this woman understood he is the one who had come to this area of Tyre and Sidon, and he's the one she needed to go to for her child to see her child deliver from de demonic oppression. Meanwhile, the Jews who should have known, because they had the scriptures and they knew they were looking for the Messiah, the Jews didn't accept Jesus Christ. She's the one, a Canaanite woman from another region, and she comes and she's seeking Jesus. She knows he's the one. Now see, Jesus understood that. He understood this is a Canaanite woman who's coming to me, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and the Jews are not accepting and understanding me. They're not coming to me, but she is. And so he's going to give a great demonstration to the disciples about faith, that it's by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and faith alone in Jesus Christ alone that we're saved and have our help. But she came to him. She didn't go to anybody else. She went to him. And she wouldn't give up. Even, even when mothers come from the wrong people. You see, she was a Canaanite woman. A woman of Canaan. And these, uh, it says Jesus went out and he, behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and she cried out to him. I want to show you real quickly what a little bit about this area. Uh, Tyre is up here right along the Mediterranean Sea. And Sidon is right up here. And uh, today, Be Beirut, Lebanon is right up here. So this would be the area of Lebanon today. But this was the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. And so we see here's Jerusalem way down here. And Jesus is all the way up here in this region along the Mediterranean Sea. And this woman, this Canaanite woman, she recognizes who he is and she comes to him. And I think that is absolutely astounding. That's an astounding fact that she came to him that way. And so that's where this, where this area was. And all these people in this area before Abraham and the descendants of Abraham and then when they went into Egypt and then 400 years or later they were led out by Moses from Egypt and they came and settled this land. The Canaanites were the people living in this whole land. This whole area would have been uh, what is now uh, Israel and Jordan Lebanon and Syria, those would be the areas where the Canaanites had settled. The uh, Egyptians called them the Canaanim, the Canaanites, the Canaanim people. And so they were an ancient people who had been there all these years. And uh, this woman was a descendant of them. And when uh, the Jews came with Moses and then when Joshua led them in the campaign to take the promised land, they didn't uh, eliminate all the Canaanim, the Canaanites that were living in this area. And some of them were allowed to live and there were still some living in this area, obviously. And so one of them came to see Jesus. If you really think about that, that's amazing to me that she's the one looking for him when all the Jews should have been running to him and bowing at his feet. And their love, of the love of a great woman, by the way, great women do not allow a rejection or disrespect to keep them from seeking what's best for their children. There are times when mothers have to go through all kinds of hoops and, and challenges and struggles in order to provide for their children. And her love is more powerful than her fear. 
You see, for a woman of that time and in that culture to approach a rabbi, and Jesus was a master teacher as a man. He was God, but he was also a man. And she was with Jewish men. And for a Canaanite woman to approach this group of Jewish men and talk to him and be begging him meant she was facing rejection and shame and, and, and whatever from these men. And she was willing to do that because her child needed help. So she says, have mercy on me, O Lord. Son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. What amazes me also is she was knowledgeable about who he is. O Lord, Son of David. So she was able to overcome all this anxiety about approaching these men, and her love was more powerful than her fear or any concern for herself. She wasn't thinking about herself. She was thinking about, how can I get help for my child? And her love enabled her to overcome anything, even the shame of being a Canaanite, not an Israelite. And I know you could translate that today and say there are some women who feel like they're not, maybe they have a past or whatever, and they're not, they don't feel good about approaching certain people and asking for help. But when a mother is desperate for her child, she will do whatever it takes to try to seek what's best for her child. Even to the giving up of everything else she's got to try to do what's best, or to work and hold one job or two jobs or whatever in order to make sure she takes care of her child. And the tragedy today is we have many women who are raising children by themselves. And the men are where? And why aren't they there? Why aren't they taking care of the children? Why, If they have separated from one another, why aren't they sending support to make sure they are taking care of these kids? It's a whole other track of thought. But great women don't allow any anything to keep them from doing whatever they have to do to try to do the best thing for their child. And her love enabled her to overcome all this. And her love empowers her to overcome all kinds of hardship and sacrifice. And I know we have women in this room who have gone through tragedies and hardship and sacrifice and had to work and had to deny themselves, and had to educate themselves so they could get a better job, and whatever. But they did it because they loved their children, and they did whatever was best for their kids. And the great woman is determined not to give up. She is persistent. If the Lord doesn't answer her, the scripture said, He answered her not a word. And i got to say, when you go up to somebody, and you're asking them for help, and you're begging them for help, and they don't even answer you, that is discouraging. It could be very discouraging to have someone who won't even answer you. And she knew he was the one. Now what faith did it take for her to go to Jesus Christ and he doesn't even answer her and then the answers he does initially give to her weren't all gushy and comforting. But she never gave up. She doesn't allow that to discourage her. And Jesus' words, it isn't right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Seems so much unlike all the other things that Jesus did or said. That's why I know he had a reason in it and a purpose in this to show her great faith was the key to his heart. 